Hey everyone, this is Mike uh, at Ma Capital with an update. Uh, today is Tuesday, uh, June 6th, and around 6.30 New York time, so markets here have been closed. I had noticed something that I thought was interesting and might be of value for you tomorrow. Uh, so the last couple of times uh, we've seen the market rally, uh, we've seen you know these sort of uh, reversal candles now on a couple of occasions. And uh, typically what we've seen is a, a, a pullback thereafter, that reversal candle. Um, and you can even include um, this one in here, which I didn't highlight. But again, uh, this has been a, a familiar pattern. This is something to watch, obviously, for tomorrow. Um, we have, uh, you know, basically it would be easy to sort of get a sense of whether that's going to work or not. I mean, all you have to do is take out the high of 4,300 uh, tomorrow. And then obviously that would suggest that this pattern has been killed and there'd be further upside. Likewise, if we were to break uh, below 42, uh, 70 or 42, 60 or so, it probably opens the door to a steeper drop, maybe back towards 41, 70 or so in the coming days. And, and again, this would be a pretty good indicator with a gap also to fill at 4220, which may be a more immediate uh, area to look for if this level of support around 4270 ends up breaking. So again, I thought that was rather interesting. It seems to be an easy way to keep track of potentially where markets can go tomorrow. You can see even in this case, we had a big sharp rally and we kind of leveled off for a couple of days. You can see here, big sharp rally kind of leveling off here. So something to pay attention to is saying the same thing here. We had to move up and we leveled off. So again, this looks just very similar to what we've seen in the past. And it's something worth uh, being aware of uh, at the very least. Uh, and also today we had a pretty big move in small caps. We've been, we were talking about we had to really hold this 172 area on the small caps, and we had some resistance at 176. Um, so the, the 172 area certainly held. Uh, we were able to gap above resistance at 176, and you can see now we're we're sort of tr testing this upper upper res upper um, level of resistance. Uh, on the IWM, depending on how you want to exactly draw it out. So um, again, you're going to need to see the market hold above this this 183.60 level on the IWM, and that potentially sets up further room to rally to around 187. Uh, likewise, if you move back down below this trend line, you know this is a big get. This is a big kind of wall that needs to be closed, I guess, if we were to see a drop, and it could be a significant one, you know, all, with a gap fill all the way back down to 176. So this is something to keep an eye on again. And these are very easy to sort of, because if you see the market, you know, immediately get above these sort of intraday highs that we've seen on the IWM, the, the SPX, and even the um, NDX, which is uh, this one here. Again, you can see the same sort of thing. If you look at it on a daily chart, you can see the reversal candle yesterday. Uh, and then a very similar price action today. Um, in terms of market breadth, it's certainly improving a little bit with the movement in the Russell 2000. But when you look at the the, the New York um, uh, the New York summation index, it doesn't. It's still in, in a negative number. And and overall, this looks like a fairly weak rally thus far. Again, you're going to want to really see the breadth in the IWM continue to get better in order to uh, kind of confirm that there's potentially more upside. WM is also a little deceiving because the KRE is a very big component to the IWM, and that was up almost 5% today, being the regional banks. And there's certainly more room for them to rise from here. Clearly very oversold. Momentum has certainly shifted more bullishly, and you can certainly see that there's room for it to really move up to around 45 or so before we really hit any resistance. So you're going to want to watch the KRE very closely because if that's performing well, that means that the IWM is going to perform well. But the little trick here is that if you start looking at the ratio of the QQQ to IWM, I mean, this thing hit, you know, record highs, I, I would say all time highs, right, in terms of the ratio, which really means that it's potentially possible that you could see the QQQ and the S&P 500 really underperform over the next couple of days if the IWM really starts to catch a meaningful bid. You can see it even on this sort of scenario. So what this means is that because the mega cap names have sort of led the market so much higher, it's kind of distorted the, the indexes a little bit. Uh, and so what's possible here is you have a move into you know, sort of regional banks and, and a broadening of the breadth 
in that part of the market, but the rest of the market doesn't really participate, just like the small caps were kind of left out as the rest of the market rallied, at least on the major indexes. So this is something to be aware of. Um, obviously, the other thing here is that the VIX index has moved sharply lower. Uh, you can see that right now it's, it, it closed basically today at 1395. This is a level you haven't seen on the VIX really going back to uh, basically before the pandemic began. Uh, and so basically every single gap here has been filled on the um, on the on the VIX. And, uh, you know, the question really becomes is how much further can the VIX go down? Clearly trading all under, all under all the levels that were witnessed during 2021 when we had quantitative easing, which helps to dampen volatility and makes it really ideal to short volatility. We clearly don't have that right now, although the reserve balances and the balance sheet have sort of uh, leveled off. Uh, I would assume that now that the debt ceiling has sort of cleared, that eventually you're going to start seeing reserve balances begin to decline again, which really doesn't make it a great environment to short vol. But this is certainly what you've been seeing. And interestingly, today you saw the VIX uh, fall by about 5%, but the VVIX was basically flat. And you can see the ratio is pretty much back also to, you know, levels that were before we had the big sell off last year. So, this is sort of an interesting dynamic where you're seeing basically, you know, the the vol of the, the 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 measure of implied volatility for the VIX basically kind of showing some signs of bottoming and maybe putting in a bottoming process here with this reversal candle on June 2nd, while the VIX index is still making a lower low. So this is also something to be very aware of because. It, this is beginning to look like a very crowded trade, and obviously we have option expiration uh, for the VIX on the 21st, which is the week after next. So this could still persist for a little bit, but the other thing that's also interesting when it comes to option expiration is just taking a look at the way the um, the, the open interest levels are and gamma levels are uh, for the VIX. Um, you can see that uh, basically, uh, there's really very little gamma down here below 14, and that's because there's really no open interest below 14. So you're sort of entering a period where it almost seems like the pain trade for the VIX would be to go higher and for all these puts to get crushed and lose a lot of value. So it, this is a really tricky spot here in terms of um, where you are with implied volatility and how much lower it can really go. Um, and it's something certainly to um, be aware of and to be watching closely. And, uh, and so, again, also when just looking at sort of the um, positioning for the SPX tomorrow, at least based off of today's levels, um, again, you can see that the, um, the, big, uh, the big gamma level, which is likely to offer uh, resistance right now, is at 4,300. And if we go out to the expiration date on the 16th, which is the big expiration date, um, you're going to see that it's also at 4,300. So the gains on the S&P may actually be sort of limited unless you can really pierce through this 4,300 level with some authority. Um, it just doesn't look like there's as much pull from uh, an options perspective for it to go much higher than that level at this point. Obviously, these levels can change. And it's worth something uh, checking tomorrow. The other thing, uh, if we kind of circle back to the DAX, which last time we spoke, we had mentioned the island reversal top. Uh, to this point, that island reversal has actually still held. Um, you can see that there's been a clear level of resistance up here around 16,000, 16,100 or so. So again, this is something to watch. Obviously, a break of 16,100 sets up a climb to around 16,150. And more importantly, would kill this island reversal pattern and would really sort of suggest that maybe there's further to go on the upside. Likewise, uh, there are still a gap here to fill at 15,850. But really, for you to start thinking about further downside, you need to see it get below 15,650 or so. Anyway, that's all I have. Hope you have a great rest of your week. Bye.